my brother and I went down to join up together and we decided we wanted to go to the Air Force. My training, I went to Shepparton in, in Victoria to do my rockies. After that, 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 they made a blue there and they sent us to Geelong. But when we got to Geelong, they said they didn't want us, so they sent us to Adelaide. So we went to Adelaide there and we were doing an electrician's course. And uh, about three parts of the way of the course, they decided they had enough electricians, so they wanted some uh, radio mechanics. So they picked us all up and sent us to Sydney. So we, uh, we took over a couple of hotels in Bondi, the Astra and the Pacific. And then we went from there to, uh, we used to go and do our work at Ultimo. So we used to get the bus every morning to go to Ultimo, which is a fair, fair trip. And then they decided to send us to Canberra to, to form a squadron, a squadron had come down from Darwin and we had to be reformed in Canberra. It was a 13 squadron, it was. And we had to reform the squadron there as a, we went down as armour assistants. The, the aircraft we had were uh, PV-1 Ventura, the Navy type. There's two types of Venturas, a Navy and an Army. But we, we with in the Navy, Navy type, we used to go out and drop in depth charges and all that sort of stuff. We used to transport the men from working from here to there, you know, wherever they wanted to work. And uh, when, we, when we, there was any of our aircraft shot down or damaged or crash landed or anything, we used to go out and retrieve them. That was in 22 RSU, uh, we retrieved them. We were living in, 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 in the boat with the Americans then, for they had ice cream and everything, or every coffee, whatever you wanted, ice cream for lunch and all. <laughs> they lived in a lap of luxury. They did really, they'd do anything for you. Uh, they, they, they'd give you, a carton of cigarettes for a tin of evaporated milk because I used to use it for cream. Yeah. But they give you a carton of cigarettes for a tin of that, which we shouldn't have given on the tins, of course. We had to broken up a case to get out of that tomato. The <laughs> there are little things. Well, while we were unloading the boat, we, we ate with the Americans. With him, I had a little tiny plate. I always carried a little tiny plate. But it's a, for tonight, on my first meal, he picked it up and he threw it straight down the rubbish tin. He said, this is no good, and he gave me a plate this big. <laughs> so they, they looked after us. They looked after us well. The Americans told us there was a Japanese submarine on their horizon. We could see the sub, but we couldn't tell whether it was a Japan or not, but they knew. And then uh, the next day, there was a big... Uh, floating mine come down, it come down towards the boat like that, and then it got into the wash and went round the back of the boat, yeah. like that. So we had, that was our first introduction to war. Jack, Jack and I got a bit bored there watching a boat getting unloaded once, so we said to a yank, one of the Yanks that were there, we said, we're going for a trip around the island, so being tra Jack was transport and I was transport, so we, we went and got a jeep after transport, and uh, we decided we'd go around, uh, run around the islands. This late, late in the afternoon, it's coming on dark, and uh, we, 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 had, we knew where we were going. We, were, we knew the road right around the island, so we we're going to take that one. So we took it down, we, and we come right around that here, we come down here, and when we got down here, it was, so some Aussie race out with a rifle and says, halt, you know, you can hold all you know, the rest of it, you know. And so we stopped, naturally, and uh, he said, what do you think you're doing? And we said, just having a look around, why? Well, well we've got to see the officer. He brought the officer out, officer of the day, and boy, he didn't he wail us into us. He said, you just come through Japanese occupied territory. <laughs> we didn't know there any Japs over there. But we had just been come, come through a Japanese occupied country and they never even looked like interfering with us. 
but it frightened hell out of us when they told us. I tell you, we went through straight back to the ship then. I never fired an angry shot. I never shot at anyone. We used to do guard duty as of a night as well, you see. And I'm on guard duty one night and we're on top, top of this hill that had been levelled off. And, and the headquarters and everything was up there and that was why duty was round and round the headquarters. And I looked across and I seen, so I seen this bloke over there that was sort of there. What's that there? And he was squatting down, I thought. He's right alongside the jungle. Why would he step out of the trees to have a crap in the open? You know? And I watched him and watched him and finished we running around again and he'd moved and I moved further along. And I'm staring and staring at him. And he's still squatting down. And I thought there's something wrong with this bloke. So uh, and yeah, when the when the bloke come to relieve me, the other fellow come to relieve me, he said anything to just, you know. And then I don't know, and I told him this bloke over there, you know, and he looked at him, he said, I'll, I'll go around here, he said, and you go around there, he said, and we was getting between us. You see? We thought, I don't think you'd be a jab, you wouldn't be a bloody Australian. So he went one way and I went the other way, and we get around there, and I, I came back for some reason. Perhaps I didn't want to get it. Anyway, I come back and he, and he went on and then he came back and he said, you're queer. I said, what? He said, that Jap just walked over and over. He said, you just seen him walking around. He said, that's a boulder. It was a big stone. That's all. That... And I nearly had a shot at him. <laughs> but I thought, no, I won't, I won't, I won't. You know, I had him lined up and I thought, no, I won't do this. This is being stupid. I said, I won't do this because he probably got a family in Japan, you know. They, they'd want him back. So, and no one, it was right up towards the end of the war. We knew the war was finished. And so, so I said, no, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have a shot at him, and I didn't either. So I never fired, never fired one angry shot during the war. Not one shot did I fire in anger. We were up on this, top of this hill that had been levelled off. And uh, we were pitching our tents up there and that sort of thing. And so, real smart is we thought we'd go out and get a load of bamboo. So, we're going to build out off the top of this. What's the name? Is it? So, we did that. We got the bear, went out. And when we got out there, there's three Japs there and they're dead, naturally. Otherwise, we wouldn't have stayed. <laughs> but there were three Japs there. And it was, one, it was a big fellow, I think he must be a Formosan or something like that. And. Uh, I was with Jackie, it was Jackie and I, and, and a young young fellow from the West. I, don't, I can't think of his name. But he said, I want a souvenir. And I said, well, go ahead, please yourself, get what you want. And he said, that bloke's got a belt around him, the big fellow had a belt around him. And he said, oh, well, I'll, I'll take that. And the stench was pretty bad. So he uh, reached down and he got it and he pulled it and pulled it and pulled it. And the next thing, half the Jap went that way and half the Jap went that way. He was cutting fair and half, pulling the belt right through him. Yeah, I remember that. Ooh, smell, poof. When I, when I come home, I got out the taxi at the, at the house and my mother and sister were walking up the street and I yelled out at them and I went up with them and they were going, I lived in Southwark then in Adelaide. And just over the river was another different suburb. So we, we went round over the river yeah. and they were heading that way, so I went with them and uh, we went round to such a place and they, they, we called him a delicatessen. This is awful, this is. We went round a delicatessen and they, and they said, well, you haven't had any decent food for a long time, you know? Like the food used to be all right, but, you know, you, haven't, you know what I mean? So, so and they, they got to be, got to be a plate full of meat sliced up meat, you know, different types of meat and that sort of thing. And I said, that, that looks lovely, you know. So I got, I got to start. And the first bite, all I, could, all I could taste was the stink of dead bodies on the islands. You see, on, on Labia, when they went to, uh, oh, this is a part I missed out on, when, when they went, went to lengthen the strip, the strip was there just for fighters. Well, they wanted to bring the bombers in, see. So they lengthened the strip, and when they took the top of the, what's the name, off, 
it was a gray grave, a big grave with hundreds of bodies in there, and the stench went all through the islands. And and you, you could taste it. You could taste it for a week after. You could taste it. You know, you time you had a meal, and that's what I tasted when I got home. First thing I done, so I said one mouthful of meat, and that was it. I couldn't eat no more. It tasted like dead bodies. I don't worry about Anzac Day now because I can't march. I could go down and go in the, in the cars and that sort of thing, but I don't, I don't worry about it no more. I do think that they uh, think more of the First World War than they do of the Second. I do, I really do think that. Because they're always, all you get it on the television now is Second World War, uh, First World War, First World War. You know. After all, I think we did our job just as well. Although, I, I'm thank goodness I was never in the first one. Because I didn't like that trench warfare. Not for me.